I feel like the audience is actually going to be able to grow with me. They're going to see the maturity. They're going to see the change, the, the transformation, you know, the love, the, the emotions. You know, it, it's going to give a lot of people a different side of young black men, you know, that they probably never would have seen, you know. And, and, I, and, I, and I love this show because of that. Because it actually exploits those feelings. It actually exploit those emotions and you know gestures that, that actually occur in a young man's life. I don't see it as me having this gangster thug image. Um, thug life would be more uh, accurate, but it's not an image, it's just a way of life, it's a mentality. Yes, I have taken the time to reflect on it. Um, in my reflection, I don't see it as being wrong, I just see it as being a stage that we all go through. It's not a question of whether you can hear me, but more like, can you forgive me? Positions I done faced, conditions I couldn't take, them hard times and promises that I couldn't make, made a beast, now it's hard for me to smile, now I'm young, living fire, too stuck in as a lifestyle, I'm contemplating the reasons why I do what I do, maybe the drama, the stress, the bullshit that I've been through, it seems like trouble, something that I'm kin to, hard to get out of, but easy to get into. Lord, forgive me. That was a song where pretty much I tried to go back in, in a place where, you know, it was kind of dark for me. You know, I had, um, I was actually going through a whole lot at the time. Um, you know, in and out of jail, you know, situations with my children's mother, you know, disappointing my mother, my father, and just pretty much repeating the same mistakes over and over. And at the same time, disappointing God. You know, because there was a lot of situations that he pretty much got me up out of. He blessed me to get up out of so you know I wanted to talk to him because these are conversations that I was like really having with this man every night you know night to night day to day whether I was in a jail or out of jail you know these are the conversations that I was having with him so I asked him to put this song on the beat put these conversations on the beat there's nothing that we can tell God that he, that he doesn't already know nothing you know but still let me voice my opinion let me talk to you I already know you know what's going on with me, but let me actually give you, you know, my perspective and my aspect and my voice on what's going on and why I feel the way I feel right now. Elevation Nation Media Group, an entertainment agent for media coverage and access. We create and produce inspired development video and audio content, such as films, short films, documentaries, talk shows, transformational reality shows, radio shows, podcasts, PSAs, commercials, video profiles, and video resumes. Why Elevation Nation Media Group? Because we elevate you by any means necessary. Contact us at www.elevationnationmedia.com. One thing I don't think nobody can take from me is I truly believe that I am a good, good father. I feel like I'm an amazing father. I feel like I go above and beyond for my children. Mm. You know, again, I'm um, going back to, I'm going to go back to Leo. Um, Leo didn't want for anything. Leo didn't want for anything. She had everything she needed. Anything a little girl, you know, two, three-year-old girl could want at that time she had. You know, it wasn't ever a point, you know, during those first three, three and a half years that, you know, she would, she would go with that. Mm. You know, I had I used to get a four nights out of the week. It wasn't no court order or nothing like that, you know. Um, we were on good terms and everything, even though, you know, we split up and we still did have a little incident prior to that, but, you know, things got a little better, but, <clears throat> um, you know, I would get a four nights out of the week. I'm going to use this for an example, you know what I'm saying? Um, Monday, I'm at work. I know tomorrow, which is Tuesday, I got off. So Monday, after I get out of work, I fly down to, uh, to her mother's house. I pick up my little girl. 
and bring it back to my house. You know, we play, we hang out, have fun, go to the beach, um, you know, uh, uh, miniature golfing, go to the movies. I go grab all, all the little cousins, all the little cousins, you know, all the little cousins on my days off and, and just take them out, whatever, and just spend money on whatever it is. Y'all want to go to the arcade, we're going to go to Azumas, you know, um, what's it called, Sky Zone, out to eat, you know, Cold Stone, whatever the case is. We always going somewhere or doing something. I'm a, I'm a real active person, so it doesn't stop just because I have my child with me. You know, we always gonna do something, but it's just gonna, I'm gonna make sure it's something family oriented. You know, so uh, Monday, pick her up after work. We enjoy ourselves, hang out, you know, have a good time. She uh, bathe, clean up, put her to sleep. You know, Tuesday, is, which is my day off, you know, we go out, hang out. Like I say, pick up the gun, the look, all the look cousins, you know, whatever it is that we're going to do for that day, we go do. And uh, come back, you know, hang out, chill, shower again, and, you know, back to sleep. Wednesday, I would have to go back to work. I would drop her back off to her mother's early morning before I actually go back to work, um, before I go clock in. So, I did that, you know, you get, nah, Nine times out of ten, if you work, you probably get two days off. So I would have my daughter four nights out of the week. And according to what my lawyer had told me, though it's not, you know, documented or anything, the court pretty much looks at the parent who actually has the child overnight, the more days out of, or the more nights out of the week, they kind of look at them like the guardian. And that was something I didn't figure out until actually uh, I went through a situation where she actually tried to put an injunction on me. <coughs> um, but you, you know, we always doing something. I'm, I'm a big, big, big kid. Anyways, we laugh and running around. You know, running through a little. I had a little. It was like a castle tent type thing, or whatever, with a little tunnel and everything, and you can crawl through the tunnel, or she can crawl through the tunnel. I get stuck in the tunnel. But you know, she'll crawl through the tunnel. I'll be on the other side looking through the door or whatever, and this and this and that. And we running around laughing and kicking, crawling all over the place. You know, I'm a big kid. I'm a real, real big kid. Yeah. You know, that that's like pretty much what I bond. You know, how I bond is the way it is. Because we always playing. I mean, even to this day, we be on the phone playing Walmart, you know. She, uh, she actually is supposed to be a store, store clerk at Walmart. I'm, Asking her, do you have milk? She tells me no. I act all crazy and belligerent, and oh, why don't you have your milk? This, this, and this, and that. And she be on the other end of the phone laughing like it's just so funny. And we do this all over again. It's another game that uh, we actually play. Um, it's not a net. We don't have a name for it, but she be like, Daddy, I want you to try some. What you want me to try? I want you to try these bananas. You like bananas? Yeah, I like bananas. Oh, try these bananas. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, I'm eating a banana. I'm eating a banana. Uh, it's baby food, banana flavor, and I ah, blah, blah, blah. she just laugh. Ah, ha, 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 you know. So it's like I, I'm nothing but a big kid. I'm nothing but a big kid. You know that's why that's why my daughter loves me so much. But she know, you know, when that friend fade out and it's daddy time. You know, when it's time to like you know get get it together. Now we got we need to actually talk about something uh, you know but I'm her best friend she my best friend and um not taking from nothing from a mother she loves a mother to death you know what I'm saying but a, a mother's not as playful as I am you know they, they play around and you know laugh at Kiki from time to time but it's like me and it, we on a whole nother level we on a whole nother level you know what I'm saying we, I will play with all day all day you know so you know, my my baby has always loved me for that. Always loved me for that, for real, for real. She always loved me for that. But um, Yana, like I say, Yana, we really didn't have that that privilege to to get there. We still, even to this day, don't really have a relationship. You know, um, again, I had love two months after she was born to go to school. We never really got to build that relationship, and even to this day, the relationship that we have is based off of my me and my daughter's relationship. Um, she knows my face, she knows my name. Well, I don't want to say she knows my name, but she knows I'm her father. But our relationship is built off of seeing the relationship that you have with my big sister. That's what it is. My big sister love you to death. I know she call you daddy. 
You know what I'm saying? So it's to a point where, okay, well, I know you daddy. I tell you I love you from time to time. I talk to you over the phone from time to time, but you know, for the most part, it's not like we don't have that bond, you know what I'm saying? She don't, she don't really get on the phone too much and talk to me. You know, I mean, if she does, but I love you, daddy, I love you, daddy, things of that nature. And, um, you know, probably won't even really talk to me, just be on the phone, just holding the phone or whatever, talking to everybody else and walking around. And, you know, I would sit, I sit on the phone 10, 15 minutes, not saying nothing, just listening to them in the background, talking and doing whatever it is they doing, because it's like I miss them that much, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, yeah, half the time, we don't even have to talk. I just want to make sure that, you know, I, I get a chance to hear her voice. Let her talk to her daddy, but you know. And it's been getting a lot crazier lately anyway. You know, nowadays, like, I don't know what's going on over there, what's being said over there. But situations are getting a lot worse. And I'm starting to, like, feel a different vibe over there. So it, um, I really don't know how to explain it. it just. It's not seeming the same over there, you know, it's really not. Iology Inc., an innovative navigational and creative company that works with its clients from the inside out. We believe in walking our clients hand in hand from concept creation to brand management. Our innovative process assists our clients in conceptualizing, developing, building, rebuilding, or restructuring their lives, businesses, and brands. Are you ready to be seen heard and remembered contact us at iologyinc.com um you know when yana came around or when yana came in the picture again neither one of my children were asking this I, I planned on both of them you know so i actually i was happy about uh i was happy about yana i planned on yana but yana was supposed to be a boy that was supposed to be my boy both of them was supposed to be my boy, actually. Um, I wanted my boy first, then I wanted a little girl behind it. Leah came out to be a girl, so I wanted to try again. And I didn't want to have a whole bunch of different baby, not want to say baby mothers, but what can I say? I didn't want to have a whole bunch of children from a whole bunch of different females. So we weren't together at the time, but, you know, we still were cool. We st I was still trying to help her and, you know, get her to where I feel like she should be in life or whatever, you know. We talking about school and, and this and this and that or whatever. And, okay, I'm going to help you out. So, you know, I would rather have a child from you again, you know what I'm saying? So I got to a point where I want my boy. She didn't mind it, you know. Um, I actually think before that, I, I actually think that we actually tried to be back in a relationship for a brief second. I was like, oh, I ain't no one in the world. But, you know, I still want my boy after that. So, I went and, you know, we did what we did after that. No, to my name. That's when Yana came in the picture. <clears throat> um, yeah, I've never been married before. Me and her spoke on it before. We, we definitely spoke on it before. Actually, it was one particular day. She was in the shower. And I had walked inside. The, um, I walked in the bathroom. And, you know, I pulled the curtain back real quick. So she, she bathing and everything, and I, and I asked her, I say, what is it that I can do or say that would just put you over the top? Like, this is it. Like, I want to be with him for the rest of my life. Like, I love I love this man. What could I do, you know, or say to make you feel that way? And without hesitation, it's like I almost didn't even get the last syllable or two out my mouth before finishing the sentence. And she said, marry me. She said, I say, marry you. She like, yeah, you asked. I gave you a question, I mean, answer. Marry me. And, you know, I like smile and kind of like chuckled at the situation, whatever, you know. Pull the um, shower curtain back, you know, and I walked out the room. And I was planning on marrying her only, only because that was something that she wanted. And I, at that time, I was in love with her, you know. So I'm gonna give you whatever it is that you want. Me personally, I don't really care too much for marriage. I don't really think too much of marriage. Um, and you know what I mean people get married all the time and then divorce three months later you know and it's supposed to be like a re religious and spiritual thing but I don't see what a 
you know, the religious and spiritual part comes into play of, for one, you gotta pay to get married. Then you gotta pay to get divorced. Then if you get divorced, you may have to pay your ex-wife on a monthly basis, you know, um, alimony, if, if she so chooses to, to file for it. Then people still be, you know, cheating and doing Lord know what with whoever, you know, like I just don't, I'm not really, care. I just feel like it's a piece of paper, honestly, to me. I don't feel like it changes anything. I don't feel like, oh, we're married now. Now it's the real deal. Now we really have to be, you know, I feel like we should have been doing that well before we even got to this point. You know, why are you trying to change now because we're married? No, I'm marrying you because this is how I feel. You know, this is what I want. This is where I see us. Don't nothing change because you're married. Or at least not, not in my opinion. I don't think nothing changes because you're married. Other than you probably get my last name or something. But, you know, I, I never really cared for it. I never really cared for it. But, you know, if I'm in love and that's what you want, and I know that's something you want, me, my job, like I get the most satisfaction. My satisfaction comes from knowing that you happy and knowing that you have everything you want and I'm fulfilling all your needs. So if that's something that you want, I'm gonna make sure I do that regardless of how I feel about it. I'm gonna do it for you. You know, but we actually called ourselves getting engaged. Well, actually, I don't even wanna say that. I went out and bought a ring a couple months later. And a whole bunch of little BS was going on. And in between all that going on, you know, it got to a point where it was like, <laughs> ain't no way in the world. And I let her mama know, I was like, uh, I'm about to take that ring back. She like, what ring? I said, man, I had bought a ring because I was going to marry your daughter. She like, oh, you going to marry? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that, man. Yo, look, hey, she on some other. I can't deal with that. Ooh, I'm not about to be, get, I'm not about to get stuck like that. Ain't no way in the world. So, I actually want to take the ring back and all that. No. I think I, I think I, I think I end up letting her keep it. I think, yeah, if I'm, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, I don't, I don't think it costs like three or four hundred dollars anyway. But um, I plan on getting a big one later on, but that's what was on at the time. But um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe I had actually, uh, you know, her mama had told her, oh, he took the ring back, this and that. She came back, I, oh, you was going. What was the ring for? This and this and that. I told her what it was for. And then she snapped and on and on. You know, went crazy, whatever. And you know, a couple days later, I ain't like, never take it back home. You only got it. You know what I'm saying? But it never went no farther than that. Um, yeah, it never went no farther than that. But, you know, after Talia was born, well, actually, before Talia was born, excuse me, you know, when, um, when I actually, we could see, find out what was going on, we were still staying at her mama's house at the time. And this when I'm really like starting to get my feet wet, you know, like jumping in the dope game, whatever. You know, I've been playing around, but you know, when Leia came around, I was like, okay, we getting serious. So, you know, um, I ended up getting my own place and moving TT with me. For the simple fact, there's no way in the world I'm about to be raising a child in someone else's house. So, you know, it, it got real for me. So, you know, we got on, or I got up my own place and had her come with me. I eventually put her on the lease. Um, That really didn't last too long at all. I think maybe, maybe a month, maybe two months after. Yeah, it probably was about two or three months. Probably two or three months after Leia was actually born, it was like, it was too much arguing going on. When you have a little girl, it pretty much is. You, you, you a, a little girl is delicate. Very, very delicate. You know, um, there's just, it's a way that you gotta handle and raise a, a, a little girl. And one of the things you gotta make sure you do is you gotta make sure that you keep them from a hostile environment. You have to make sure that they know how a man is supposed to treat a woman, talk to a woman, love a woman, you know. And I could not do that 
me myself being a man and, and, and being a father, I could not do that and fulfill all those needs that my daughter would need to, you know, like grow with and those values and those morals and like that understanding. I could not do that living with no attitude. And again, I'm not blaming her for everything, no. But um, I could, I couldn't do that. You know, we had to, we had to separate. We had to separate. You know, so after, after like, you know, my daughter being born and seeing never, it was just to a point. Nah, we gonna stop this. We gotta go. You know, so I ended up putting her out. Um, she went back to stay with her mothers, but again, you know, little girl was going back and forth, back and forth between my house and her grandmother's house. So, you know, I mean, that, that was the end of that. I couldn't, yeah, like I said, I couldn't deal with it no more. Around all this time, you know, I was rapping too. And again, you know, I'm, I'm selling my dope, kicking in those or whatever it is that I was doing. You know, I got money coming in. You got a one-stop shop. You got a one-stop shop. Literally got a one-stop shop. You know, so um, with me bringing in money, I'm doing a lot more moving around. You know, uh, I've always been a fan of music. You know, the whole time I was locked up doing the two years for the uh, arm car jacket. You know, I'm doing nothing but music and know, like my first day in though. You know, a lot of people may be a little intimidated. And not not saying that I wasn't. I ain't never been up here to no, you know, the fourth floor like that. Or the, you know, it's a number of serious charges in here. A number of serious people in here, you know, murderers. You got attempted murderers. You got rapists, which are actually in a whole nother block and everything. Um, they keep them, you know, to themselves, sex charges and things of that nature. But, you know, um... Ain't, ain't no drug offenders in here. Like everybody in this particular, you have a violent charge if, if you on this floor, if you in this, uh, you know, this, these dorms. So, and you had nothing but stories before you even get there anyways. So yeah, I was nervous as ever. But, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I'm a stand on all 10 regardless. But you know, the first time I get in there, you know, I'm not going to just, and nobody told me this at all, nobody told me this, but I, it, it was just in me. You know, it gave me my little bunk and everything, my boat. You know, I go, you know, put it, stash it wherever I need to stash it at. You know, put it in a, in a cell or whatever. Somebody, uh, uh, older dude actually on here now, um, Jimmy. You know, the um, old, old, old head now came over. Hey, yeah, this, this, that. No, I'm saying okay. You know, uh, hook me up with a room, whatever. So, I'm tired. I really want to go to sleep, but I feel like that's a sign of weakness. You know what I'm saying so. I go out there, you know, and it's early morning anyway, you know what I'm saying? So I go sit on the table, they got a TV playing or whatever. We got dudes over there playing cards, you know, they yelling, cussing, and ha <laughs> ha. You know, it's it, it, it real right there. You know, you kind of feel that like aggression over there. So, you know, I sit there, watch my little TV. About 30, 40 minutes later, it's when the whole block wake up, you know what I'm saying? Everybody coming back from court, because it was actually kind of empty at the time. But everybody coming back from court. So when they coming back to court, you know, it's um, lunch coming up or whatever. So everybody, the whole dorm starting to work, wake up now. So that's when we were like, oh, it's a lot more people in here than I thought, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, 
a group of dudes actually go to one of the cells and you know they start beating and everything. I am the city. 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 And ain't another nigga in that fucking with me. I'm chasing people. I want it all. And anytime you see a nigga, I'm a ball, my nigga. I am the city. I am the city, I am the city, I am the city, if you a hater. And as they beat, you know, they got a little cypher going on. And um, back then, I was freestyling all that. I can't freestyle for, for nothing in the world. I can write something for you, but I can't, I can't freestyle for nothing in the world no more. It's like, you got to exercise your mind for real to be freestyling over. Like, it, 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 it's just like working out, for real. You want to be the best football player? You got to work out. You got to condition. If you want to be the best freestyle or rapper, whatever it is, you got to make sure that you keep that up. You got to keep practicing. You got to keep working. When you're in the house, whatever, you got you to keep going. But, you know, I was doing that heavy back on before I even went in. So, you know, they had that little cypher going on. So, you know, I get up on the table. I walk around there. I want to go see what's going on. So, you know, I'm listening to people, whatever, this, this, and that. And then there was a dude, you know, standing right next to me. And he started doing his little thing, you know, so I, I gave him a little, his, his little shot or whatever. Then I, like, tap him, like, you know, just to give him that little sign, like, okay, I got right behind you. You know, so he finishing up, and as soon as he finished up, I jumped right in. And, you know, I, 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 you know I'm doing my little thing, and I see him. Like, oh, who kid is? And everybody, you know, like, dog, like, oh, you know, like, you know, we, we vibing, you know. <laughs> We vibe and we having a good little time, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, from like that day on, everybody knew me for rapping. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knew me for rapping. Making songs, you know, Fridays, we go up to Wreck Yard or whatever. Everybody been writing their songs all throughout the week, you know what I'm saying? We go up there, this block go, you know, that block go, you know. We all up there hanging out, and it's just a concert at the Wreck Yard. So, everybody know I always knew me for rapping and everything. And then it got to a point where I was like, okay, well, I got all these killers, man. You know, these like some hard and career criminals and everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, these dudes done been up the road about 10 years and jumped back out and headed back up the road for like another 30 or something. You know, I got all these dudes rocking with me, you know what I'm saying, in my music. So it was like, when I jumped, it was like, this something I'm gonna do. Like, when I got out, that's when I really started taking it serious. Like, this something I'm gonna do. You know, and a lot of, uh, you know, everything, a lot of the music from off my favorite mixtape, I ain't gonna say favorite mixtape, because, you know, I <clears throat> too much trouble, I'm kind of like put a, a hole, I don't even want to say a hole, but for the start of my career. But uh, the mixtape I put out, like a lot of the music I had on the was actually, probably 60% of the music on the was actually the songs that I had already wrote, you know, I was locked up. So I come home and I'm actually making money, whatever, doing my little thing. Started linking up with people, whatever. I actually got into a studio and, you know, started taking off from there. Well, now we, you know, we all over the place, performing in Miami, performing in Tallahassee, no, not Tallahassee, um, Lake City, Jacksonville, Tampa, Clearwater, St. Pete, you know, Gainesville, all over Florida, you know what I'm saying? Naples, we like, just everywhere, everywhere, all throughout Florida, just performing and everything, passing out CDs, having a good little time, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, I was like, a highlight of my life, for real, I was having fun. I was having a lot of fun. Come back home, you know, chill with all my babies and, you know, vibe for the weekend. And then, I mean, be, and then next weekend, be right back out there again, doing it all over again. We was having fun. We definitely was having fun.